<laughs> Good evening and welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of the City of Kettering Planning Commission for Monday, October 2nd, 2023. The meeting will be televised as usual on Miami Valley Cable Council, cable channel number six, and streamed live over the internet at mvcc.net. It will also be recorded and available for later viewing on mvcc.net. <clears throat> I would like to thank the Miami Valley Cable Council for televising and taping tonight's meeting. Since this meeting is both audio and videotaped to form a complete record for possible appeal to city council and or the courts, it is important that anyone who wishes to address the commission to please come down to the lectern, speak into the microphone, and give their name and address for the record. The Planning Commission is a volunteer independent body appointed by the City Council, whose mission is to hear all bodies involved and subsequently make a motion to approve, deny, continue, or recommend the application. All action by the Commission can be appealed to the City Council. <clears throat> I'd like to begin by introducing the members of the Planning Commission. Uh, to your extreme right is Ken Lackey, our Assistant Secretary. Next to him is Carol Fisher, our secretary. And she is followed by Connie Gaw, our recording secretary. I'm Ray Waskey, the chairman. Next to me is Don Ruthman, our vice chairman. And at the far end here is Troy Urbis, our planning commissioner. Uh, tonight's city staff is Ryan Holmesy, city planner and zoning administrator. <clears throat> Starting with old business, uh, tonight's first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the Commission's meeting of September 18th, 2023. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of September 18th? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of sep September 18th, 2023. Um, um, Yes, Mrs. Gall, would you please call the roll, please? Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Rathman? Yes. Mr. Lackey? Yes. Mr. Urbis? Yes. Mr. Waskey? Yes. The, the minutes have been approved. Turning now to new business, the second item on our agenda is a request for a zoning map amendment from EDO number 17 to B Business at 1490 West Dorothy Lane Planning case number 23-018. This is a public hearing. First, we'll begin with staff's presentation, Mr. Holmesy. Uh, thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> um, this case involves a approximately 1.6 acre lot located at the southeast corner of the intersection of South Dixie Highway and West Dorothy Lane, kind of circled in red on the map there. It used to contain a PNC bank that was demolished a couple of years ago, and now the only improvement on the site is that parking lot kind of in the southeast corner that you can see. Um, this property is a part of uh, EDO 17, this, which was established originally in uh, the year 2000 as a part of the, hill, the redevelopment planning for the Hills and Dales Shopping Center, which eventually became Governor's Place. Um, and that's kind of that peach color on the screen there. That's the EDO 17 district. And this zoning district was established kind of as a mostly office, uh, mostly office uses, but there are some allowances in there for low traffic kind of support uses like dining restaurants and things of that nature. Um, but it's almost entirely an office district minus the uh, allowance for a few uh, retail uses, which was included in the packet that went out. Uh, the applicant is requesting that that property be rezoned to B Business, which would amend the zoning map as shown on the screen now. And when looking at zoning map amendments and determining how to recommend, uh, what kind of recommendation to forward to City Council, there's a couple sections of the zoning code that come into play. Uh, the first one is 1153.12.6.A. Um, and in this section, it states, no map amendment shall be recommended for approval prior to a specific and documented finding of at least one of the following criteria. And there's five total criteria. 
Uh, the first one is that the proposed amendment is consistent with the City of Kettering's comprehensive plan and with the intent of the zoning code or such inconsistency or, or such consistency is being sought concurrently. Um, the property in question falls with, that's the future land use map on the screen now included in the comprehensive plan. And this area, along with all of Governor's Place, is labeled as a professional office and business park. And this, there was an attachment included in the packet that included the excerpts from the uh, comprehensive plan. Um, the comprehensive plan recommends land uses within this land designation, which are compatible with the proposed zoning class, which are not compatible with the proposed zoning classifications. Um, and that, it's kind of hard to see on the screen now, but also in the comprehensive plan, it lists some of the allowable uses within the uh, professional office and business park uh, land use category, and that's really professional office and research facilities. This section was amended, I believe, about five or six years ago to include high density housing and support retail uses with the goal of uh, creating uh, walkable neighborhoods where you can work, live, and shop, and things of that nature. Uh, this area of town, the, the land use, or I'm sorry, the conference plan further refined um, certain areas of the city that were determined to be um, critical redevelopment areas at the time that the land use plan was established, and that included the Governor's Place area, which is highlighted on the screen now. And within the this section of the comprehensive plan, um, it's still labeled the Governor's Place area as professional office and business park and delegated kind of the commercial uses to the north of West Dorothy and kind of northwest of the intersection of South Dixie and West Dorothy. Uh, the second criteria is there has been a change in demand for land that alters the information upon which the official zoning map is based of, uh, is based as a result of one a change in population consumer preference economic indicators or other socioeconomic trends two a significant change in area or neighborhood condition building conditions or traffic volumes or, or three a major change such as the construction of a major road the installation of a utility line or other similar factor that significantly alters the area and there's been no apparent chain, uh, change in demand for land that alters the information which the official map is based upon, so this finding cannot be made. Um, criteria number three, a study commissioned or conducted by city staff indicates that there has been an increase in the demand for land in the requested zoning classification, and as a result, the supply of land within the city of Kettering mapped as such on the official zoning map or official development pattern map is inadequate to meet the demands for such a development and no such study has been conducted by staff, nor was one submitted by the applicant, so this finding cannot be made. Criteria four, the proposed use cannot be accommodated by sites already zoned in the city due to a lack, due to the lack of transportation or utilities or other similar development constraints or the market to be served by the proposed use cannot be efficiently served by the geographical location of the existing zoning districts. Um, the proposed use is an automobile fueling station, convenience store, and drive through restaurant. Though a rezoning to the B zoning district would allow numerous other uses, which were included in the staff report, in terms of fueling stations, there are several in the immediate vicinity, and there is, is also no apparent deficit of fueling stations, convenience stores, or uh, drive through restaurants in the area, so this finding also cannot be made. And finally, criteria number five, there is an error in the zoning code text or official zoning map or official development pattern map as enacted, and no such error exists, so this finding cannot be made either. On top of those uh, five criteria that are reviewed when we get applications for zoning uh, map amendments, section 1153.12.6.b of the zoning code states that the, that the planning commission shall consider each of the following matters based on the evidence presented to it when reviewing rezoning applications. Issue number one, the extent to which the, the proposed amendment and proposed use are in compliance with and deviate from adopted plans, goals, and policies. As noted in the prior analysis, the proposed amendment is not compliant with Kettering's comprehensive plan. While it is the overall goal of the city of Kettering to rezone existing EDOs into base zoning districts, the office district would be the most appropriate existing base zoning district for the subject property when looking at the goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan. Number two, the suitability of the property in question for the uses permitted under the proposed zoning. The property is not well suited for the uses permitted under the proposed zoning. The B district is the most intense commercial district in the city of Kettering, so many intense commercial uses will become permitted on the property should this rezoning be approved, including but not limited to car washes, automobile fueling stations, drive through restaurants, etc. Number three. 
the adequacy of public facilities, such as transportation, utilities, and other required public services to serve the proposed use. The site is located at the intersection of West Dorothy and South Dixie, so it is well served by utilities and public services, but direct access to the site may be challenging. Further, while full, while full movement direct access to the site from West Dorothy is not possible, Governor's Place Boulevard does provide an indirect access point to the site, which could contribute to an increase in commercial traffic onto a roadway meant to serve office and other light traffic uses. That being said, this, can, this standard is actually satisfied by the requested zoning amendment. Issue number four, which kind of goes along with the last one, the effect of the proposed amendment on surrounding uses. Uh, the proposed rezoning would deprive the adjacent EDO 17 zoned properties from expectations that the subject site will be developed in accordance with Kettering's comprehensive plan, which calls for business park and professional office uses on the subject property, not uses such as fueling stations, oil change uses, car washes, and drive through restaurants, all of which would become permitted on the property should this rezoning be approved. Further, while direct access to the site from West Dorothy, if permitted at all, will have to be in the form of a limited access right in, right out access point, there is full access from West Dorothy to Governor's Place Boulevard, which is here, um, which would allow indirect full access to the site from West Dorothy if the subject property is rezoned to, be bus to business. Numerous high traffic uses could be built on the property, which could contribute to a large increase in commercial traffic onto Governor's Place Boulevard, which serves several office and low traffic uses that were developed in accordance with Kettering's comprehensive plan. So this factor is not satisfied. And number five, the effect of the proposed rezoning on the economic viability of existing or developed vacant land within the city. Um, in the report, staff laid out that there is no apparent shortage of business zone property in the city of Kettering and any increase in said zoning districts could hypothetically diminish the value of other such land in the city. In fact, throughout the city, the current supply of business zone property exceeds demand generally, and this oversupply sometimes contributes to low rates of return in rents for property owners, and this in turn le can lead to a lack of investment and reinvestment. And the last factor is called sole interest. Um, and this states that the Planning Commission shall not recommend the adoption of a proposed amendment unless it finds the adoption of such an amendment is in the public interest and not solely for the interest of the applicant. As stated previously, there has been no proven increase in demand for commercial land in the city. Further, this requested rezoning is not in compliance with Kettering's comprehensive plan, so the sole interest lies with the applicant who would benefit economically by allowing the property to, to develop with a use that is out of compliance with the applicable area plans. So that factor is not satisfied. And finally, section 1153.12.6.c of the Kettering Zoning Code states that the Planning Commission may recommend the application be granted as requested, or it may recommend a modification of the amendment as requested, or it may recommend that the request be denied. And these recommendations shall then be forwarded to City Council, who will hold a public hearing on the item and a first and a second reading at future meetings of that body. And staff does have a recommendation, but before we get to that, um, I know there's people here on behalf of the applicant who'd like to speak and potentially some neighbors as well. So I would be happy to answer any questions. Hey, does anyone on the Planning Commission have a question for Mr. Holmesy? No? I do not. But, uh, so I just want to be sure that everyone here understands that the uh, the one sticking point is the uh, uh, access for from traffic on the west side of Southern Boulevard is going to come down southern, um, come down Dorothy Lane and down uh, Governor's Place Drive. Is that correct? I wouldn't say that's the main sticking point. It's just kind of a general comment that it would push some traffic onto Governor's Place, the com commercial traffic onto Governor's Place. The main sticking point is really the comprehensive plan, being out of compliance with that and the oh. expectations of the surrounding office users on how this property would develop. Oh, well, that's, that's true. That, that's true Which, also. Yeah. Those go hand in hand, though. Yeah. Okay. They're very similar. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Holmesy. Um, is the applicant present? Yeah, they are. They, they have a presentation that they want to give, which I'll switch over to, assuming that you're ready to hear them speak. Okay. I think we're ready. Okay. 
Great. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kareem Ammer. I'm with Skilkin Gold Development. We're out of Columbus, Ohio. That's 4270 Morse Road out of Columbus, Ohio. With me today, I have Josh Long from SESO, Civil and Traffic Engineering. I have AJ Scott also from Skilkin Gold Development. And I have Nate Green from the Montrose Economic Development Law Firm. I'd like to thank staff for the presentation, uh, and I'd like to thank you all for, for having us this evening. L let me know when you want me to switch to the next page. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I like to start off by, by getting a common base of, you know, understanding of who's been to Sheets and who hasn't. Has anyone here not been to Sheets or is unfamiliar with, with Sheets? I've never been to one. Okay. Do you kind of get the premise of what they're about? I do. Okay, great. Well, uh, so enough. Could I, could I ask you a question? Is yeah. this the same sheets that is trying to go into Centerville also? Yeah. The, yes. The same, same yes. okay, same type. Right. So, um, you know, Sheets and Skilking Gold have had a longstanding partnership for upwards of five years now. We've been the exclusive developer for Sheets throughout Central Ohio and going into the greater Dayton area. Um, you know, I, I, it really does pride me to say they've been an excellent partner to work with. Uh, they, they really do take as much uh, thought into being a good neighbor into the communities as they can. We really try to identify components of various sites where we can contribute and, and hopefully make the area better than we found it. And we hope to work with you um, to, to identify that and provide that. I do like to take this time to really speak about the misconceptions about sheets and really the things uh, you know most people don't know about them rather than you know to be redundant about the side talk about some of the more exciting stuff. Sheets primarily was born in the food industry out of Pennsylvania, not the oil fields out of Texas. That's really what their DNA is all about, is, is the food. Um, you know, we, we hear that people see the, the fuel canopies and they say, oh, it's another gas station. Um, really, we find that people come back to Sheets and are really big fans of Sheets because the food tastes good, not, not because the gasoline tastes good is what we like to joke about. With that, Sheets also differentiates itself by having fresh food delivered daily. For those who haven't been to a Sheets, it's a really fascinating experience. And you can, you can change the slide. I'll have you do one more, actually, and I might have you come back. Um, one more into the interior. So when you enter Sheets, you do order off a digital pad, uh, and you have an uh, endless menu of made-to-order food. And that's really what excites people the most, is um, at any time of day or night, you can um, order a wide array of food. It is also a convenience store, has really specialty items uh, that most people can't find, um, and it has indoor and outdoor dining. Sheets is also a family-owned corporation. So what that means is all the Sheets locations are, are owned by the Sheets family. And that means they, there's no franchises or franchisees. You really get the same level of quality, service, and cleanliness. Um, a really high thought-provoking activation in the interior. And if you don't mind going to the exterior as well. Um, it's four-sided architecture with brick, um, stone and glass. It's, you know, a, a really thought out building uh, and it, it presents very well. I highly encourage uh, those of you to either go to our newest location in Huber Heights. We also have one in Springfield opening up tomorrow, actually, which, which we welcome you guys to attend to. Sheets is also extremely philanthropic. Um, at each grand opening, they, um, they donate to the Special Olympics of Ohio, uh, as well as to local food banks as well and do their part again to be good neighbors. A common misconception I really do want to touch on is the traffic. You know, when, when Sheets proposes at a location like this one, uh, the conception is Sheets is bringing the traffic with them. And that's really not the case. Sheets is by all means a traffic capturer, not a generator. They are not in the business of, of speculating for higher um, traffic volume. They go to a site because it's there and, you know, they want to capture it. Uh, we've done dozens of traffic studies and, and 
similar jurisdictions, seldom do we find that we increase traffic by double digits, hardly ever over 10%. You know, we go through the effort of understanding the psychology of the traffic, which is really that people aren't going out of their way um, to to go to a sheets. It's really the convenience. People have routes to and from their work and their daily lives, and they go to our sheet stores uh, utilizing those routes. Aside from our first you know, one or two that had a lot of hype behind it, we find that people now are, are just using them for convenience, again, on their daily route. So that's a, a large part of the analysis we go into, into these um, heavily trafficked corridors is um, you know, people get worried that it'll, it'll change the nature of the interchange, um, and really we're just there to complement and to um, tap into uh, the healthy nature of the traffic. I do like to talk about the operations as well. Sheets does have a drive-through at this location. Uh, that is also ordered on a touch screen as well. You don't really get the, the squawk box, someone yelling to take your order. Uh, and it's complimentary to the app. A lot of people use the app to order ahead. We seldom see stacking really less than 10% of their food activities at the drive-through. One thing I also like to notice that, or point out that separates us from a lot of the different fuel station users is Sheets has really set itself up to be future proof. And what I mean by that is Sheets is the largest partner of Tesla supercharger destinations um, for fuel station or convenience store or restaurant users. So while we can't choose Tesla to come here and for this to be a location, uh, oftentimes Tesla is sh choosing Sheets. So um, as we enter into this new era of, of charging cars, Sheets is really set up to be a place where you can have an experience while doing that. You can't charge your car in two minutes. It takes at least 15 to 20 minutes, sometimes more. There's going to need be uh, there's going to need to be things to do, and uh, Sheets is really setting themselves up to, to not uh, be left behind. Um, I'd be remiss without mentioning that Sheets does have over 700 stores, and they have, to this date, not, not closed a store yet. I would like to take this moment also to um, refer to the staff report as well. You know, there are some things that we don't necessarily agree with, and, and I think primarily it's the office component, really. Um, you know, you look at the uses at the intersection, really capturing the frontage and the axis, and they are similar to what we're doing. You know, there's a Wendy's, there is a BP, and there is a strip retail center. Those are all retail-focused commercial businesses that need the frontage, that need the access, and that's really what, when we looked at the site, we thought we were proposing something really in line with that. You know, the site is designated as an office zoning district, but I think the more profound question does need to be have if that is proposed. Uh, is that pro appropriate, my apologies, in this day and age? Um, we've seen a paradigm shift in office over the past five years, really. Uh, you know, we all went through this pandemic. We all, I'm sure, had to work from home at some point, And office is still in a precarious environment and will be for the foreseeable future. So, you know, I think, again, the profound conversation should be had um, is if it's imperative to keep forcing a, a, an office zoning district that, you know, should an office development come, has a high likelihood of vacancy, and the last thing any city really would want is to have a vacant office building. Sheets, um, again, is open 24 hours. So what that means as well is they hire 30 to 35 full-time employees. So when, when you take a look at that, the revenue that generates on a per acre basis is, is not insignificant. Um, and I have with me today, you know, Nate Green, uh, who's, who's going to elaborate on that, uh, that component exactly, is the economic development component. Because if we're here to, to you know, to weigh the office, uh, the office zoning district based on the comprehensive plan, what are the key components that are benefit to that, and, and can Sheets bring that, bridge that gap while also having 
quite a bit of other benefits. So, you know, out of all the criteria that was said, you know, it, it, it mentioned we did not meet a specific criteria, which was the change in demand. Has there been a change in demand in the specific zoning district? And I think, as we can all attest to over the past five years, there certainly has. The demand for office and uh, the risk that it imposes, I think is something we should all consider when, when looking at this intersection. We are really in an environment where there's not a tremendous amount of users that can take these high profile corners, quite expensive corners, put a very nice looking building, nicely activated building, and, and do the measures they can to contribute to the city along the way. That list of retailers and users is, is dwindling more and more. So I, I think it's worth having conversation if, if this, you know, although it doesn't fit into the comprehensive plan, is it still a benefit to the city? Uh, and, and we're here to have that conversation with you folks. So I'll pass it over to Nate Green now, who can uh, elaborate more on the, the data and the economic development behind Sheets. Uh, before you go, I have a question. If if no one else has, anyone have a question for this gentleman? No. Uh, uh, go ahead, Mr. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say you had mentioned some of the the adjacent uh, business uses. I believe those are all in the uh, city of Moraine. That's true. That's true. But I guess I was alluding to more the character of the area, the character of the intersection. But that is that is true. Mm -hmm. I had, a a I had a question, yeah. Uh, this concerns the number of vehicles per day sure. that are in and out. What, what's, the, what's the number that you project? Um, you know, every location is different. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, we do have a Sheets representative who, who knows all that uh, information, but I can get that to you. Sheets, the whole company, is out on a, a week-long retreat. Um, but we can pull the data for this specific location that they've identified. We're happy to send that along as well. Yeah, I realize that's dependent on the location you're at and the traffic flow and all that. And I think that'd be something we would be interested in seeing. Yes, yeah. happy to provide that. And, and you did say it's a 24-hour day operation? That is correct. That's right. Uh, let me see if I have any other questions here. Um, and do you sell do you sell products, uh, alcohol, CBD, that type of thing? They do. Yes, they um, sell beer and wine, no liquor, um, and um, yeah, they do have those products that are, of course, to compliant with all local and state regulations. Okay, I think that's an important point to bring out okay. to the public. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate that. One more question. Please. <clears throat> when you look at your volume mix, you talked about the restaurant versus the gas. What's your mix of volume that come in and, and utilize the food food side of it versus the gas side? You know, Sheets does have a tough time articulating that to us even because the majority of people who come for gas end up going into the store. Um, that is another ratio that hopefully I can provide to you guys, but I don't have that data point right now. Do you know how much dining space you're anticipating locating inside the building here? Yes, we typically have, I believe, about 400 square feet of indoor dining space, and we do have outdoor dining space as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Mrs. Fisher. You've mentioned that you have 700 stores. That's correct. Yeah, really yes. Can you tell me when this began? Um, yeah, so again, Sheets started in Altoona, Pennsylvania, and again, they started as a restaurant. So um, they really got their bearing in Pennsylvania selling quick service food items, um, and that's what they continue to, to, to capture. Um, as their business model grew, uh, they wanted to make this a one-stop shop for convenience. They wanted to uh, combine all the things that people generally uh, need in one location that hopefully complement each other. Can you tell me how long they've been um, Yes, if you go to the first slide, 1952. And now we'll pass it off to Nate Green, as I mentioned. Thank you. Thanks, Kareem. Thanks, members of the Planning Commission. I'm going to uh, pass something out to you. I'm going to pass up this uh, economic impact report. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And when you get up to the podium, would you state your name and address? <coughs> All right. 
Thanks. Uh, my name is Nate Green. I'm with the Montrose Group uh, based in uh, uh, Columbus, Ohio. My address is 100 East Broad, Suite 2320, uh, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, good to be with you all this evening. Thanks for having us here. Uh, Kareem uh, talked a lot about the sheets and what they are. Uh, we, uh, I wanted to just talk a little bit about the economic impact um, of the project. Uh, Kareem talked about there being um, 30 to 35 employees that will be full-time and part-time employees uh, that are there. Um, you know, that just that impact alone, and you can see here's some of the, some of the impacts. Uh, that creates $1.5 million in payroll uh, directly to the site. Um, overall, the uh, total impact, economic impact uh, between direct and indirect and induced employees is 127 um, 127 people, which is a total value add to the to the city of Kettering of, of a little bit over $3 million. These are numbers, this, these numbers that I'm talking about here that are generated, um, this, is, uh, this is generated from uh, what's called Implan. Implan is a planning software that does economic impact analysis. So these are not me making up the numbers, they are numbers that uh, come from um, well-regarded software in the economic development community. That's just the impact, uh, that, that $3.2 million that I talked about, just the impact the employees uh, that are going to work there. There's also going to be a construction impact. Um, there will be 51 workers that are directly engaged in constructing this facility when it goes up. Uh, and that labor income, that direct labor income is $3.4 million, which is significant. Um, there's also, if you look at just the, uh, the total tax impact, if you look at um, sales tax, um, uh, construction, you know, uh, income tax, all those things that are going to be generated from income, uh, I'm sorry, from taxes, uh, we're looking at um, a total impact of, of over $1.8 million, um, not, not just to the city of Kettering, but also um, to the county, to all the uh, levying agencies that, that collect income tax and collect property tax. You know, this site today, if you look at it today, it's a vacant site. So it's generating very little uh, for both an income tax perspective and from a property tax perspective. Uh, from an income tax perspective, we know that that site was a PNC bank at one time. That probably had between, I would gather, uh, eight to 10 employees. Um, they probably had a, 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 um, a um, they probably had a payroll for those eight to ten employees of six hundred to seven hundred thousand uh, dollars. You know that roughly generated sixteen thousand dollars a year in income tax to the city. Uh, this, the sheets, if we just use a, as a conservative estimate of thirty employees, uh, they're going to generate one point five million dollars in new payroll. That's thirty seven thousand uh, dollars, thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars in new income tax generated. So you know we're proposing some, something that's going to double the amount of income tax that's coming from this site than what was coming from the site or what came from the site when it was a PNC bank. The property taxes, this is not a tax abated property, uh, but if you look at the, uh, we're not seeking a property tax abatement. If you, I, I, I can't tell you what it's, what it's generating today, but it could generate between $75,000 and $100,000 in, in property taxes on an annual basis. City of Kettering gets very little amount of that, but the schools get a much greater portion of that. So all the levying agencies. So that's a, that's a great economic impact. Um, I did want to speak a little bit, and we've got some other gentlemen here from uh, from the real estate uh, brokerage, um, you know, just the, the office users. Um, that site, uh, the current user bought that site in 2018 uh, from PNC Bank. You know, uh, it's been five years since they've owned a site, they owned the site. They bought it with the intent of putting um, the office in there, medical office in there, just like the surrounding uses that are behind it. Um, as you all know, because it's five years later, they have not uh, successfully put medical office use there. Um, so they sought out opportunities to try to find something else to go there. Um, so, you know, we're going to bring bring economic benefit. We're going to bring this great convenience store gas station. It's going to bring uh, all these all these jobs of the community to a site that doesn't have any jobs on it today uh, and isn't likely going to have any jobs in it for the near for the foreseeable future uh, based purely on the fact that the current owners um, are not looking to build on the site you know you also look at just general vacancy rates um, in the southwest Dayton area we're in that in that market the vacancy rates in office are not awful they're 5.7 percent but the challenge 
is that that trend for vacancy rates is not going down. The trend for vacancy rates is, is, is going up in all of the Dayton area and all of uh, the Southwest Aiken market. Uh, it's, I mean, that's, that's nothing new for all of you. You all hear that, I'm sure. Less people are going to the office, so there's less of a, less of a market for office. So, you know, it, it really, I think, is, as Kareem talked about, um, you know, this does not fit into the comprehensive plan. We understand that. Um, it uh, it um, is a different use than what um, than what is there today. But we think this is a great opportunity uh, for the city to turn this site into what is today a vacant property that's producing no income and no property taxes into an income economic generating uh, economic activity with an awesome store. These sheet stores. Now, granted, uh, I, I you know. I'm a consultant for Sheets, uh, but I go to a lot of these stores. They're great. They are, uh, they are the, ple the people that are always pleasant. Um, the, pe the stores are always clean, um, and they also always have the cheapest gas. I will tell you that. That's something that they, uh, that they go for. So anyway, with that, I will, I will uh, leave you with that and open it up to any questions that you might have for me. Have any questions? I, questions? Uh, I'm just looking at the picture here. Sure. Is, is this... The building that will be going in that you propose, is this going to be something of that size? Yeah, it will look very similar to that building right there. Now, there will what you don't see in this picture, there's also the, the canopies, but the canopies are also uh, where the gas stations are or the fueling stations. For, for the fueling, yeah. right. No, yeah, there we go. Okay. So that's the, that's the canopies. That's what would be out front. Okay. Um, and how many uh, fueling stations, fuel pumps will there be? Are there, are there five or six? Five. Yeah, they think there's a total of six. Six, yeah. okay. I'm just trying to get a feel for the, and maybe I should ask uh, Mr. Holmesy this, sure. uh, because I think this would be revealed. That's what I'm looking for is a preliminary site plan. Yeah, and you can see there, if yeah. you look, um, the building would be, um, you know, kind of on the Dixie Avenue side. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the canopies are going to be on Dorothy Lane. And, and my, my question, I guess, to Mr. Holmesy is, uh, is this project going to fit, th this preliminary site plan, going to fit the square footage that we have overall in this s site? Well, we didn't do a full analysis of whether this site plan would meet the zoning code because it's, this request is not about whether this site plan makes sense. It's whether it makes sense to rezone this property to the B zoning district. So right. we included that just because to show what they're thinking. It's also not about how awesome the proposed use is because we who, another pandemic could happen, rezone it and suddenly that user goes away. And now we have a B, it's whether that B zoning district is appropriate at this corner. Okay. Um, I've been to a sheets, they're perfectly fine establishments. Um, but unfortunately when we were, when we were fortunately or unfortunately, when we, when we review these requests, we don't look at the proposed user, we look at the comprehensive plan, whether or not all the uses in that district could potentially be appropriate here, and whether or not it meets those factors we went over. And if the answer is no, then the recommendation is what the recommendation is. But uh, I mean, just glancing at it, like the dumpsters in the front, that can't, that's not permitted. <laughs> I mean, there's a couple things that are wrong with it, but it, other than, I mean, it looks like a okay site plan if it was actually zoned B. So yeah, for so for the purpose of rezoning, yeah, I I, I get it. We don't you know, we don't get down to that level of detail, but at some point in time, we get a preliminary development plan. Is that is that right? It it, de it depends on whether it's a conditional use or not. If the site plan would come to the planning commission or not. In the case of uh, fueling station, f uh, fast food restaurants, uh, in the B district, they're permitted by right. So the planning commission wouldn't review the site plan. It would just, uh, they'd get their building, they'd apply for their building permit. We do the zoning and building review concurrently and there wouldn't be a public hearing or mm. a meeting with the planning commission on those items. Okay. Okay. Do you mind if I ask a question? You sure. know, some mechanisms we've done in the past is, you know, um, put conditions to work through a site plan with staff. Um, if there's also a, a PUD component to your text, that that is something we would be open to exploring with you, a, a commercial PUD. What that does is allows um, City of Kettering to have ultimate control of our site plan, our, our, our 
text document. Uh, you guys will choose our landscaping and, and confirm where our um, dumpster would go and elevations and things of that nature. So that is, those are some mechanisms we've done with other municipalities and we're happy to explore that if, if that gives more assurance. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? One more question. One more question. Mr. Green, uh, I'm curious, why here, why not somewhere else? That's, I mean, uh, you know. Did you look at other options? Well, I will tell you that, you know, Sheets, as, as Kareem said, Sheets is uh, expanding in the market. This, for them, uh, this is a great location for them. I mean, you know, it does, there's a lot of traffic that goes by there. Um, you are a community um, that has, uh, um, you know, wealth and can and, and can go to these stores and they're they can, it makes economic sense for them to go there um, that's that's the main reason that they want to go there is it makes economic sense for them to to go there yeah yeah but when you asked that question my first question that came to my mind is wouldn't a location right off the interstate make better sense in there oh go ahead there's uh, sort of a variety of different prototypes of sheets if you will they do have the larger truck diesel sites 16 acre sites that are meant for off the interchange mm -hmm. and they have these highly urban sites um, that that also do well and, and are meant to cater to, to, to separate audiences mm -hmm. I see correct so we, so for instance uh, um, in Tip City, which you know you all know where Tip City is up on 75 and 25A, they're doing a, a, a store. They they propose a store there. It hasn't been gotten zoning approval. They've approved one there that is right off the interstate, um, but that's because it makes sense for them to be there. They also have one that's further down on 25A that's not off the interstate. Mm -hmm. That is more of in an urbanized area. So they they do both. Uh, in the Columbus market, they have both. They have ones that are uh, right off of 70. You can see them when you drive on 70 to go in Columbus. And they have ones closer to where I live, which are in a in a neighborhood, and you can't access by the highway. So they really want to have both. And I think, uh, you know, I said it makes economic sense, and it also makes sense for the neighborhood. You know, um, they had prepared to order sandwiches, right? You, so there, there's other places that are like that that don't have a fuel station component, and they're good, and they're actually what people want to go go to. So there's a lot of reasons that they want to go in these areas. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the applicant? Nope. Uh, unless you have further questions, no, that's, that's all we have at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, since this is a public hearing, <coughs> if there's anyone here in the audience wishing to speak to the commission on this matter, Please uh, come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. I want to speak. Yeah, please. Uh, my name is Steve Ireland, and I'm a resident of Kettering. I live at 4325 Delco Del Road, uh, over off of uh, Stroop Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, by full disclosure, I do have a professional relationship with the applicant. And, but I'm also a commercial real estate agent, working with Apex Commercial Group, um, representing tenants, landlords, owners, buyers, sellers, strictly commercial property in the greater Dayton area. So I feel as if I have a level of perspective about the question they have at hand. And I guess I'd like to speak primarily about the office component. And I recognize your master plan with regard to Governor Square. Um, and I can regale you with stories, but I had a property further to the south on Office Park for sale for a number of years, an office building that I ultimately sold at a discounted rate. And um, it's being redeveloped. It's in the city of Kettering. I found a good landlord, a good buyer. And I think his market rents around $12 a square foot full service. Mm -hmm. I do know that the office product on Kettering Boulevard in Moraine um, on the opposite side of the intersection behind BP and the Wendy's and whatnot. One building is, I think, fully vacant, and many of those office buildings are uh, without tenants. And it's a very um, difficult market to attract people to for reasons I can go into if you care to hear about them. But uh, I think the office market has been um, hurt in a, because of the pandemic. And it's very difficult to, to lure office tenants 
to any building, whether it's downtown, Kettering, unless it's a highly populated or highly trafficked area. The strongest market right now is out by Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and the other strong market is down towards Austin Landing. Yeah. Um, I represent landlords in the downtown Central Business District. I represent landlords in the South Market, and it's tough to find tenants. The other thing which I'd like to remark about with regard to the office market is I, th I think it's grand that the city of Kettering is looking for redevelopment for an office user at that site. Um, the current owner has obviously uh, abandoned it from, a pr from their perspective and has entered into an agreement obviously with Sheets to sell the site because they don't have a use for it. And I think the kind of person you're going to attempt to attract would be a single user, full owner occupied building. And the reason that would be is an investor would never look at that site because the rents in the surrounding vicinity would never support new construction. Mm -hmm. The new construction office market in Dayton, Ohio was probably around $24 a square foot, triple net. Mm -hmm. When triple net, I don't know whether you're familiar with that, that concept in the commercial real estate, but that means the tenant is paying all the expensive expenses for that property in terms of taxes, insurance, maintenance, um, heating, utilities, the whole nine yards, um, and plus a rent to the landlord, um, plus the, the cam expenses would go on top of that. So you're not going to find someone, in my own humble opinion, to acquire that site for, say, a million dollars and then build a 12,000 square foot office building on top of it unless they have a reason to be there. And I think the most active members of our market are the medical industry, the educational industry, and the federal government. So they talk about meds, eds, and feds. Mm -hmm. I think that's the kind of person that's building properties for themselves. And unfortunately, I don't think the corner of Dorothy and um, South Dixie is where someone's going to cite a project of that magnitude. Mm. I think the other thing to consider, again, recognizing the master plan, which was written a number of years ago, is the second most active part of a commercial real estate market beyond the industrial market, and the site's not big enough for an industrial property, would be retail. And I think the, the strength in this particular um, applicant is the fact that they're not buying this site in an effort to see if they can go out and acquire a user to go in there. So when you talk about a rezoning change to B2, that's what fits their use, but they're not taking the site and then shopping <coughs> it to seven different folks who may want to use that site. It's a specific user for a specific need that would provide an amenity to the city of Kettering on a corner that left to its own devices would, I'm afraid, potentially run or, or remain undeveloped for some period of time. So I think there's a, an opportunity here that needs to be um, more fully vetted. I'm not suggesting that the, the manner in which you're going about this is, is um, um, un, unlogical or in any way, I mean, I think it's very methodical how you're doing it, but I think you should consider other uses for this property, given its neighborhood, giving its neighbors, and then the fact that your master plan may be outdated simply because we had a pandemic that did um, a great detriment to the office market. And as somebody who works professionally within that market, I know that things were far different four years ago than they are now. Mm -hmm. And my future looked a great bit brighter when I was working in 2019 versus 2020, 2021, 2022. So it's coming back, but I don't know that it's gonna come back in the near future that's gonna support an office redevelopment use uh, at, at this site in the city of Kettering. So I think other opportunities need to be 
vetted to a greater extent. I thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you for your perspective. Okay. Did you have a question? Yeah, quick question. Okay. Thank you. For, no, Mr. you're good. Mr. Urbis okay. has a question for you. Question for Mr. Holmesy. So he mentioned specifically just office, office, office. What other uses are available at this parcel? Today? Well, I mean, there is there is a small retail component in the EDO 17, like the El Rancho Grande is next door, like dine-in restaurants are permitted here. There's some light support retail to be permitted for the users in the immediate vicinity, but it's predominantly, it's predominantly office uses that are permitted right there. Um, so not a huge number of additional uses beyond that. And in the packet, we included the EDO 17 use list and the intent behind why that was established in the first place. Um, but it's predominantly office. And uh, it is true that the pandemic really changed a lot and continues to change a lot. And that probably is a sign that things might need to change in the zoning code, but it could be the b business park, which is our industrial district, would, might, need, might need to be amended a little bit. It's not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean the business uses, a business zone is appropriate here, but it does mean we probably do need to evaluate our comprehensive plan a little bit more. And we are working on updating or creating a strategic plan for the city right now. I'm sure you've seen the signs around town, spark Kettering. Um, and what might come out of that could be a movement toward amending our comprehensive plan, which could very well change this area. But it takes quite a bit of study uh, to find out what makes the most sense, as opposed to a, a rapid rezoning based on not a lot of study. And the it is true down the street there's that office park drive area um, where there's several several two three-story office buildings most of that area is zoned b almost all of it is so this use would be permitted down there but um obviously it's not as good of a location but that's an example where it, it, it there are office buildings but it's the same zoning district that is being sought tonight down there where redevelopment down there into more commercial uses could be a possibility. Right. But thank you. Who knows? Any other questions? Okay. Is there anyone? Okay. Thank you. Hi. Um, my name is Rebecca Sinopoli. And um, can, can you repeat your name, please? Rebecca Sinopoli. Do you want me to spell that? <laughs> S I N, that's S. I N O P O L I. Uh, do you need my address? Yes, please. 1964 Tate Circle Road, Kettering. I just found this to be interesting. I did not intend to come here to talk to you, but um, we do own a Tesla, and it's very difficult to find any places in Kettering or anywhere really in Dayton that you can just go and charge your car. And when we travel, um, we are, we, you, it'll tell you, you have to stop because it doesn't want you to just run out of battery. And we have explored a lot of places. And the fact that if this place has good food, I mean, that's a plus, right? Because <clears throat> now you're forced to stop, <clears throat> excuse me, and eat something healthy, I would hope. Is it healthy? Okay. <laughs> because that's not, I mean, I don't want to go to Wendy's personally. And one place on, in the, on our way through Lexington, Kentucky, is like Myers. Well, that's okay. I had nothing against Myers, but I really am not going to grocery shop on a road trip to that extent, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so I just, as a consumer, think it'd be great to have. Um, that opportunity to to go there in a pinch you know some a lot of tesla owners don't have a 220 they have a 110 and if you you know it just really depends on the usage of your car but i just had to say that because i am a consumer and i guess that's it <laughs> thank you anyone else Come on down. Hi, good evening. <clears throat> My name is Thomas George. I live at 1548 Cardington Road, uh, about a block away from the proposed Sheets location. <clears throat> um, 
I feel like I, I don't represent the entire millennial generation, but I am a millennial. So um, I did come here today to talk about the impact of the modern gas station. Um, I grew up in Loveland, Ohio. I've lived in um, Kettering for about two years now. And um, I actually live, you know, like I said, a block away. And the convenient options for healthy food, um, gas, coffee, around that block, there is a Tim Hortons, but it's usually, it's very small, usually pretty packed. They don't have a lot of healthy options. Um, again, I have no representation of Sheets or any affiliation with them whatsoever. Um, the Bucky's up in Huber Heights, this is a, I think it's a very similar concept where food is kind of the first, um, you know, it's the first option when you go into, into Sheets. You know, the gas is there as an ancillary option. Um, just kind of to support, you know, people going in there and then going to get food. But um, I think it's a great idea for that block. You know, we have the Golden Nugget, which has been vacant. Uh, we have the Buck and Donkey, which I do not think is a very uh, beautiful site. We have the mattress store there. And then we have the Walmart. So, I mean, we also have a couple of retail locations, Verizon, Subway, uh, Taco Bell, Wendy's, and some of those are part of Moraine. But I think that Kettering really has an opportunity here to make an impact on the citizens that consume in that area. Uh, we don't have a lot of options right there. Um, besides really fast food, high calorie, uh, options that aren't open all the time, Taco Bell is open the latest, and I really don't want to go there for uh, a meal like when I'm out you know, doing our property stuff at night. I'd rather stop at a Sheets, grab a quick sandwich or some vegetables or something, and then be on my way and a coffee and be on my way. So uh, I think this is a great idea. I'm really thankful for the guys up here who are uh, you know, trying to propose this for Kettering. I think it's a great way to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Pat Higgins and I live at 2230 South Patterson Boulevard and I go by this intersection every day and it's very busy almost all the time and I'm very familiar with the location that they're looking at because that is a difficult site in terms of getting in. When it was PNC Bank, it was a bank that I did, did go to and I always had to think, okay, What's the best entrance and exit out of that inter intersection? Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a commercial use with gas pumps, electric charging stations, 24-hour restaurant, including drive-in, indoor, outdoor eating, and you're talking about a lot of use in one small site. And I don't think it complements the business park that uh, has been successful over the years and is needed in that part of Kettering. And I also worry about the impact on the surrounding residential area to the north because if you go by any of these new mega gas stations, you're talking about high, in high intensity lighting and traffic 24 hours a day and the residential area is just up across the street and up the hill, and it could be really impacted by this project. So I'm here to uh, request that you do not rezone the land and look at the future with regard to what would be the best use for this lot in the business park. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Higgins. Anyone else wishing to come down to speak? Is to address the commission. My name is Dina Mattiucci, M-A-T-T-E-U-C-C-I. I live at 2919 Glenmore, and I have some very similar um, concerns as Mrs. Higgins because I'm right there on that, I live on that corner. I would like to know, first off, what is a gold nugget zoned right now? Because what I'm thinking of is if you're thinking they sell that and then we have two, something very similar right there on those two corners, I don't like the idea of having two places that are open 24 hours 
a day selling liquor in my neighborhood. Mm. What is the Golden Nugget zoned right now? The Golden Nugget is zoned B business. Um, that's the Golden Nugget site's a little bit challenging because we have some standards in our zoning code where certain uses like this one, if they're not, if they have to be at least 150 feet away from residential uses, or they have to be designed in a way that prevents disturbance to surrounding residential uses between the hours of 10 p.m. and I believe 7 a.m. So this particular use of the Golden Nugget site would be would be very challenging because of the hours of operation. But it does have that zoning designation. It's just I don't know what the Golden Nugget will become in the future. So I mean, those are my concerns: is having two extremely busy places right there in my backyard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. And as I recall, I mean, when Golden Nugget was in business, weren't they basically just a breakfast and lunch? They were closed like 4 o'clock. They were, yeah, they were yeah, closed they, early, yeah. They had very limited hours. I, I used to know them by heart, but I can't recall. But I believe they were closed by 3 most days. Yeah, yeah. But thank you for your comments. Anybody else? Can I just respond to a few comments? Sure, sure. Um, first and foremost, we're very appreciative of the feedback from the community. That's the whole point of this, and we appreciate the civil discourse, whether it be against or for us. Um, I'd be remiss if I just didn't provide some moments of clarity. The charging stations, you know, we're not guaranteeing we're being, they're being there. We're just emphasizing that Sheets is a very large partner of Tesla. Tesla has to pick the location. We, we can't guarantee they'll be there day one. I'd also like to, to point out that the negative externalities of lighting, um, we perform extensive lighting plans, and um, we, there's no lighting that emits outside of our site. Uh, the, the, the foot candles is what they're called, illuminate to zero at the borders of our site. So the externalities really don't perpetuate far from us. And uh, again, it's a heavily trafficked commercial corridor, um, you know, where again, the traffic component if any user were to come on the site, traffic, you know, the ingress and egress would, would have to be figured out in some shape or form. Um, so we can't necessarily be shy from it. But uh, as I mentioned, there's mechanisms to ensure that it's beneficial. You know, if a condition is to, to have a, a more thorough traffic analysis, we're happy to perform that. You know, we're, we're open to, to uh, having conditions to any sort of recommendation mm -hmm. that, that might uh, ease some of the concerns. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if uh, we have no other comments or questions from the public, uh, we'll go to uh, staff recommendations. Uh, Chair, before I get to that, I, did you sign in? No, you, I know you. Person behind me. Oh. I oh, know you. <clears throat> I always had yeah. I, I, after staff recommendations. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one blank spot on there. Thanks. Uh, I've got a couple of questions, uh, Mr. Holmesy, before you go to staff recommendations. Uh, mention was made of the age of the uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, here, what, how old is that plan? Have revisions been made to that plan since it was originally adopted? Um, or are we waiting for the strategic yeah. plan to make potentially make changes to that? The comprehensive plan was adopted in 2002, and there have been amendments made to it. One of the ex I've made one example um, where in our professional business park uh, land use designation, we modified what uses could be in those areas to include housing and support retail to help generate cre create more walkable neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So there have been amendments made to it, but. Not not a huge number, especially to the future land use map. Uh, since I've been here, I've been here about two years, and I don't think any amendments have been made yet. But I would not be surprised, like I said earlier, if one thing that comes out of the strategic plan is that movement to do a wholesale amendment to that comprehensive plan, because a lot has changed since 2019, and even more has changed since 2002. Mm -hmm. We have been, P 
periodically getting rid of the EDO zoning code, correct? Or no longer exists, actually, right? Yeah, we've we've been incrementally as requests come in and they support the comprehensive and they have the support of the comprehensive plan we've been rezoning properties out of the edos incrementally a lot of them are over by the kroger on dorothy i think there's been four of those properties rezoned out of that edo since i've been here and that's the long-term goal uh one thing that we talked about during our last um amendment we made to the zoning code it ended up not making it into the last amendment but was including kind of a less intense commercial zoning district for like neighborhood business zone like a neighborhood business zone because the way the codes are written now you go from office to business like you go from a really light district to suddenly a very intense commercial district there's not like a step up from that so i think we would want to have that neighborhood business district established before we rezoned all of the edos but the long-term goal is to eventually get rid of all of them and have them all be base zoning districts because i heard pud mentioned Planned unit development mentioned earlier. What they really are, are fancy planned unit developments that they were great at generating development to begin with, but they can be kind of difficult to work with today. So there's no there's no code between EDO where we are today and business that would be more um, appropriate for the current use of the catering or of the of the business park there, right? So you mean, uh, is are, were you asking if there's a zoning district that makes sense here? Or? Yes. Well, in the report, we said out of the ones we have today, office is probably the most appropriate um, compared to when you look at the comprehensive plan. But depending on what comes out of Spark and what comes out of the uh, future rewrites to the zoning code, that might be different. It might be a neighborhood business district because this EDO does allow some light retail uses. It's not purely office today. Okay. But today, office is probably the most appropriate, but two years from now, um, when we have an updated zoning code and potentially an updated comprehensive plan, that I might have a different answer for you. Okay. And any other questions? Those are good questions. Okay, staff report. Staff recommendations. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, based on the information included in the report and in the presentation earlier this evening, the staff recommendation is, I'll just read the slide. Based upon the evidence presented and the analysis and findings made within the staff report, staff recommends that the request for approval of a zoning map amendment to rezone the subject property from EDO number 17 to B Business be forwarded, forwarded to City Council with a recommendation for denial. Okay. Um, we're going to now ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, yes, sir. Is there another you need to approach the lectern, yeah, please. Come, yeah, come, yeah, come speak to the lectern so we can. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a commercial real estate, so I'm kind of a geek about this. That's okay. Um, is there another recommendation that the Planning Commission can make other than what staff recommends can you table this can you yep. take it under advisement to do further research can we you know ask for additional questions yes, it's we, not we, just a, it's not a it's not x or y no that's correct we can do a, a continuance uh in fact i'm kind of leaning that way anyway because we have some open questions i think that we need to have more information that's my direction i'm headed um we can Okay. Deny. We can approve. Junior high, that when you get the right answer, you you leave the podium. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, part of what's the reason we have the recommendation we do is because the mechanism for rezoning requires that we make one of the five findings, right? Which we didn't. So our, our at some level, our hands are tied. Yeah. So getting more information, I don't at least in terms of my review of that, I don't know that any more information would change those, the ability to get a, an affirmative on any of those, it's my opinion, on those five findings. There might be other avenues that can be pursued, but I don't think the way this one's coming at us in terms of requesting uh, a change from the, the EDO to the B business just based on what we see is going to work, just based on the comprehensive plan. 
Are you saying that we recommend a denial? Yeah. Okay. That's fair enough. <coughs> Okay. Well, we still have a motion to close the public hearing. Or do we have other discussion? So we, we have a motion. I'll second the motion. Just to close the public hearing yep. part. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, I think. Did we not? Did someone make a motion to close the public hearing? I thought I heard somebody. I thought Carol did, yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Gall, would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Rathbun? Yes. Mr. Lackey? Yes. Mr. Urbis? Yes. Mr. Waski? Yes. Now, regarding the motion on this matter, uh, Mrs. Fisher has a motion, but do we want to have a discussion before we get to that point? I, I would strongly advise we do that. Um, <clears throat> I think we have, just for open discussion, we have two no votes here sitting at the table. I don't know if we have three no votes because we haven't met the criterion to approve it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think our hands are relatively tied mm -hmm. based upon the comprehensive plan and, and what the code is at this time. Yeah. I agree. We have it. So we, yeah. okay. I mean, making this, it, it gives the applicant an opportunity to go to city council and change their mind. I mean, because we're, we're sort of just looking at the code here. So mm. they've got a little more ability to. <clears throat> we have a very narrow scope yeah. that we're working within. Yeah. Um, I think you're a fine company and I find your presentations were wonderful. But in my opinion, what we have to work from, you don't fit. I would concur with that. Not that you didn't give a, a great presentation, so don't don't take it the wrong way, but we we by the criteria we have to meet, we can't meet it. So um, do we have a motion to deny the applicant? Well, uh, Ms. Fisher has a motion. Or she I has a motion, motion and we can deny it. So 1490 West Dorothy Lane rezoning. Whereas an application has been received from A.J. Scott of Skilkin Gold Real Estate, agent for Kettering Medical Center, requesting approval of a rezoning from the ED 17 district to the B Business District for the property located at 1490 West Dorothy Lane. And whereas the Planning Commission has reviewed the facts surrounding this request, including an oral and written report by city staff, which is incorporated herein, and held a public hearing on October 2nd, 2023. And whereas this request constitutes approval of rezoning of the property located at 1490 West Dorothy Lane from the ED 17 district to the B Business District, and whereas the Planning Commission adopts the findings of fact presented by staff in their staff report, which is incorporated into this motion, I move that the applicant's request for approval of a rezoning of the property located at 1490 West Dorothy Lane from ED 17 District to B Business District be recommended to City Council for denial. End of motion. Second. second. For denial, yes. Want me to call the roll? Would you call the roll, please? I will. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Lackey? Yes. M Mr. Uh, Urbis? Yes. Mr. Rathman? Yes. And Mr. Waski? Yes. So the motion has passed, but the application has been denied. Recommendation. 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 The recommendation by the Planning Commission has been denied. So the so that process, they just gave a recommendation to council. At the next council meeting, they meet the 
second and fourth, fourth Tuesday of every month, I believe. Yeah, second and fourth Tuesday, same place, 7.30 is when the meetings start. They certify the, that they certify that they got the recommendation at their next meeting that they purely just certify it. And then the public hearing happens at the meeting after that. And then there's this first and second reading that follow at the next two meetings. So there will be another public hearing on this item. Thank you all for your time. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. We're still busy. We're still busy. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. All right, you too. I'll see you later. <clears throat> Just give them a minute to clear out. Okay. okay, I think they're gone now. Continuing on, uh, other business, signing of plats. Mr. Holmesy? We do not have any this evening. Uh, communications and reports. Uh, just to let you know, we got one application public hearing for the next meeting. It's uh, actually catty corner from this site. Someone applied to that little shopping center to put a uh, vape tobacco shop in there. It's a conditional use. Okay. And I believe that's the only application we have for the next meeting. So okay. I don't where, have anything else. Where is that located? It's catty corner from this part. There's oh, a little catty shopping corner. center in front of Walmart. Okay. I think, oh. I think it used to be a Great Clips or... Okay. Oh, okay. And finally, Planning Commission comments. Do we have any? Oh, have any? None? Nope. None? And I have none. So uh, with that, we were the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Planning Commission is set for Monday, October 18th at 7 o'clock p.m. This meeting is adjourned, and the time is... 8.16 Eastern Time. Be the 16th. <laughs>